your Massachusetts real estate market update for January 2nd, 2023. So first and foremost, Happy New Year. May 2023 be filled with health, wealth, and prosperity. But what are we gonna chat about in this video? As always, we're gonna talk about the single family and condo market for the last week of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. It was crazy that that year went this fast and a lot of happened in the real estate market, which we're actually gonna be uh, talking about next Friday. So be on the lookout for that end of the year review and then a December review coming out this Friday. Now, as we know, it's been a pretty quiet couple weeks because of the holidays, but all things considered, we actually finished on a pretty great note. We definitely saw a little uptick in the real estate market last month, which was really great to see. And interest rates, they did move up a little bit as we closed out 2022. But when it comes to rates, don't let that door kick you on the way out, interest rates. Now, as always, going to do a quick check-in with the distressed properties market in Massachusetts. And again, nothing new in the luxury segment market. So I figured, let's take a look at some recent real estate news. Hey, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand home, homes and I'm one of the state's top agents. And if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. So let's dig into the data and start with the single family market. On the single family market, we have 3,255 units on the market. Inventory, it continues to drop, but it's a seasonal trend. And you can see that trend in the significant decline in this year over year inventory graph. Now, what I find is really interesting is that the level that we're starting, to, starting off in 2023 at, like look at it. Yes, it's higher than 2022, but it's only slightly higher than 2021. Inventory, it's still strained. And year over year, we have 1,107 more houses on the market in the same time last year. Now, our year over year inventory peak happened just five weeks ago when we had 1,484 units more on the market than we did at that same time last year. The decline in the year over year numbers show that yes, it is seasonal, but there's also a touch of a market pickup in there. Now we had 220 new listings come on the market last week. And to put this in perspective, we had 311 come on the market at the same period of last year. So this is a 29% decrease in new listing activity we, we, year over year. And we had 331 houses go under agreement last week. Again, put it in perspective, we had 387 go under agreement in the same time period of last year. So that's a 14% decrease in sales. And there were 633 homes sold last week with an average sales price of $648,000 and a median sales price of $500,000. Now months of in inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market with the closer to zero that you get and the more aggressive of a seller's market it is. Now the week, uh, this week, months of inventory actually ticked down from 1.05 months from 1.11 months just last week. Now the market, it continues to improve for sellers and it's going to continue to improve until we see that big uptick in inventory. Properties that are priced right and in good condition, they're selling quickly. And they're doing it very, very quickly, sometimes with multiple offers. So on to the condo market. The condo market, we had 1,673 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, as you can see, inventory, it continues to decrease. But take a look at the year over year trends. Just like the single family market, it is seasonal as well. 120 newly listed condos came on the market last week. In the same week of last year, we had 150 condos come on the market uh, last week. So that's a decrease of about 20% year over year. Meanwhile, we had 154 condos go under agreement last week. Again, comparing it to the same week last year, we had 217 go under agreement. So that means we were off by about 29%. Now, 292 condos closed last week with an average sales price of $487,000 and a median sales price of $410,000. Something to point out here is there was a huge drop in the average sale price. In the last eight weeks, we actually averaged, averaged an average sales price of $621,000. So that is definitely something that we want to keep our eye on. Now, months of inventory, it continues to pull back and is now at 1.47 months. And this is compared to last week's 1.56 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then make sure you smash that like button. And I truly appreciate you consider subscribing. Now, let's talk mortgages. Generally, not a whole lot goes on in the end of December. But in the last week, we actually actually saw interest rates, well, they ticked up a bit. This only makes sense to finish half the year this way because it was a brutal year for interest rates. Why change, right? Now, as I've said before, it is projected that interest rates, they're going to start going down in 2023. So some upcoming news to keep an eye out for is on January 5th with initial jobless claim numbers, Monday, January 9th with the one-year and five-year Fed inflation expectations, and then on Thursday, the big one, 
the consumer price index numbers on the 12th. If you want interest rates to go down, then you're cheering for high jobless numbers, seems weird to say, with low Fed inflation expectations, and most importantly, a lower than expected CPI number. So under foreclosures, accounting for all single family condos and multifamily properties, currently there are 112 foreclosures on the market in Massachusetts. There are 29 short sales for sale in Massachusetts, which gives us a total of 141 distressed properties for sale in the state of Massachusetts. So available to Stressed inventory actually decreased by six units compared to last week, but the percentage of di distressed properties available and on the market right now continues to increase to 2.51% of all available inventory in Massachusetts. Still nothing to worry about. The higher percentage increase is thanks to the decrease in traditional inventory. So let's talk some current events. Check out this article, Real Estate in 2023, Best Worst Locations to Move in the New Year. Now look, I love the sub headline, markets in the Midwest and Northeast tend to retain their value. Now the article gives examples on how El pa El Paso, Texas and Detroit, they might be the most affordable markets to move in 2023, but that doesn't make them the best investments. And I think this is an amazing point and something to kind of keep in mind when looking in towns around Massachusetts. Lesser expensive isn't always the best. The article goes on saying uncertainty surrounding the economy coupled with high mortgage rates has pushed many would-be home buyers out of the market. Now, the idea of lower interest rates should not be pushing people out of the market. And here's why. One, you can refinance to a lower interest rate. And two, if interest rates go down significantly, then that will pull people off the sidelines. That means more competition chasing a limited amount of houses, we've talked about those inventory levels, that could cause a chain of reaction of bidding wars and just another huge jump in home prices. And as a heads up, this is why I do not want the market to go down on rates at a rapid pace. We don't have the inventory available to sustain a big swing in demand. It would bring us right back to the craziness of early last year. Now, one area that I can certainly agree on, no matter the market, is where they say, if consumers really want to play it safe, it's best to look for homes below the median price home in that specific market. He goes on to say, those are going to be the kinds of investments that really retain their value because people are always going to be wanting an affordable option. Now, another place where a buyer can protect their investment is buying into towns with good schools. People are always wanting to be in a good school district. So that's one place I'd actually add on to that guy's opinions in that article. Which brings me to the next article. Home flipping, flipping profits drop at the fastest pace in over a decade. Now this is great news for home buyers. Investors are pulling out of the flipping market as profit drops very quickly. And in the third quarter, gross profit fell 18.4%. Roughly 7.5% of third quarter home sales were flips. And this is still historically high, but down from the 8.2% in the second quarter. And for the most part, institutional investors, well, they're not buying houses to rent out and they've just disappeared, which is really great news to buyers. Now flippers, they're stepping out of the market. And like the true professionals, like we buy ugly houses guys, or they're going to stick around because they buy houses really right. Their model ultimately is buying houses for about 40 to 50 cents on the dollar. It's the hobbyist flippers or the person who does it on the side or maybe just a couple a year. You're going to see some of them get burned and therefore put a stop to they're buying. The return to market normalcy is just such an amazing thing. Do you want to talk about real estate and your own personal needs? My information is in the description below. I always love talking about real estate. Whether you're looking to buy a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals, questions, or comments about the market data, then make sure you drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer you. And as always, I, as I always say, I should say, an informed person is a powerful person. So until next time.